In this video, can end-stage CKD patients really stop dialysis thanks to antioxidants? And can fiber actually repair the kidneys? When will the long-awaited artificial kidney finally be ready? Today, we're going to talk about antioxidants, fiber, salt intake, the legendary artificial kidney, and everything else. Now, before we begin, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and share the video. Let me now answer the first question. This question was posted on my recent video about a clinical trial in which nine patients were able to completely stop dialysis just by taking an antioxidant supplement, which is incredible, like real scientific miracles. Naturally, someone asked the most reasonable question, can dialysis patients really get off it thanks to antioxidants? Can dialysis patients really get off it thanks to antioxidants? So let's check the facts. Yes, it's true. Everything I say is based on legitimate, peer-reviewed medical journals, and this particular clinical trial where nine patients stopped dialysis is no exception. But there's one thing, this all happened more than 20 years ago. Someone figured out how to help dialysis patients with antioxidants. However, the medical community has completely forgotten about it. At one point in 2021, a single patient was able to get off dialysis using a cocktail of antioxidants he invented himself. And when I say cocktail, I mean something involving turmeric, resveratrol, tocopherol, and enough NAC to detox an infected tongue. In 2023, a meta-analysis was conducted to find out how many CKD patients actually managed to escape chronic dialysis. So what was the rate? Only 1.5% of patients were able to do so. But we're still talking about 15 CKD patients out of every 1,000 getting off dialysis. So should you give up treatment and wait for antioxidants to save you? Well, no. I would strongly advise against that. In fact, the recommendation is to do everything you can to improve your health right now so that you don't end up on dialysis in the first place, and that includes adding more antioxidants to your diet. Next is a very interesting question I received in a recent video about what I consider to be the most powerful kidney repairing nutrient. Here's what Shazlin5061 said about it. No. It doesn't repair them. It's good for them but doesn't repair. Thank you for that comment. So, he watched the video but wasn't convinced that the nutrient I was talking about could actually repair the kidneys. The kidneys are not organs that can regenerate themselves. Your liver, however, can. Don't take this as a challenge, but your liver actually has the ability to regenerate. If someone needs a liver transplant, they only receive about a third of a liver, and the rest? But that's not how it works with kidneys. What do you call it when an end-stage kidney disease patient starts to see improved GFR numbers instead of ending up on dialysis? So, I'd like one of you to respond to that comment about kidney regeneration. Let's see what a patient says about it. I've been in stage 5 kidney disease for about 9 years without needing dialysis. I assume the reason why I'm basically in remission is thanks to the information provided in the video. All the supplements suggested in the video are generally those that have been clinically proven to improve, or at least maintain, kidney function. I do get some occasional nausea and always feel tired, but I make it work. Let's look at the next question. Have a great day. What's the best way to improve hemoglobin levels? This question comes from Irene Francisco. God bless you. This is a very important question. Why? Because hemoglobin is the most critical indicator of anemia and CKD, chronic kidney disease. It's the first thing your nephrologist will look at to decide when to begin treatment. And of course, treating anemia is key to preventing further decline in kidney function. 
But how can we do that? What's the best strategy? First of all, iron deficiency is one of the main causes of anemia, and it can be treated through supplementation. Here's a tip, when taking iron, also take vitamin C, it helps with absorption. Now, I won't give dosage recommendations here because you need to check your ferritin levels before taking iron. This mineral can build up and become dangerous. Test first, then supplement. We also need to look at your B vitamin levels, especially B12 and folate. These are essential for your red blood cell production line. Without them, your hemoglobin production goes on strike. They're easy and safe to supplement. Thirdly, here's something not many people know about anemia. You may also need to supplement vitamin D. Vitamin D deficiency is very common, much more so than iron or B vitamin deficiencies, and studies link its supplementation with enhanced red blood cell production. So in summary, how do you improve your hemoglobin levels? By ensuring that your levels of B vitamins, iron, and vitamin D are within range. Supplement if necessary. If nothing works and your kidney disease has progressed, ask your doctor about erythropoietin EPO, treatment. Next question, does very low estrogen in adult women affect kidney health? Yes, it can. The truth is, we don't talk about this often enough. Estrogen is a very important hormone for the human body. It protects your brain, bones, heart, skin, and yes, your kidneys too. Do you know what happens when it drops, like after menopause? Suddenly, the risk of kidney damage, high blood pressure, and fluid imbalances rises. Low estrogen levels mean increased oxidative stress, and oxidative stress means your kidneys weaken over time. So what can you do to prevent these issues from making CKD progress faster? First, use the strategies I often discuss here to fight oxidative stress. You know, NAC, L-carnitine, COP-10, general antioxidants, omega-3s, all of that. Now, there aren't many supplements with strong scientific support for helping with low estrogen levels. Probably the most supported one is boron. Studies show that boron affects estrogen receptors by allowing the body to more easily use the estrogen it already has. If low estrogen levels are clearly diagnosed, you might want to consider hormone replacement therapy. This can really address the problem, but like many medical treatments, it may come with side effects, so it's important to consult your doctor and learn about it. In short, talk to your doctor, get tested, and make an informed decision. Now let's talk about the hormone that's made everyone's blood pressure rise. Yes, we're diving into the most controversial topic, salt. Here's a question for me, Lawrence999, you have to make a video about salt. The current information is really confusing and mostly contradictory. Sometimes you say minimize sodium to the absolute lowest, and now you're saying stop. What should we trust or follow? Please stop using all those types of salt. It's not good for your heart, it's even worse for your kidneys. So, no table salt, no Himalayan salt, no sea salt, no Celtic salt, no natural free-range salt, and for the love of God, please don't use any salt substitutes either. And look, if you've ever worked with a CKD patient, if you've ever met a CKD patient, even if you've just been within 200 feet of someone with a blood pressure monitor, then hearing someone ask, is salt bad for the kidneys, is almost unbearable. Sodium is not your friend, it doesn't like you at all. Now, maybe the real question here is, why are people still confused about this? The only thing I can think of is all the misinformation you find on YouTube. There are still people on YouTube selling table salt to kidney patients. Anyway, I wonder if that kind of misinformation might be the problem, because my answer about salt is simple, just say no.
let's talk about something we've heard about many times, like fidget spinners or common sense, and that's the artificial kidney. I got this question where someone asked, years have gone by, and there's been no clear progress. Is it even real? The last time we heard real news about the artificial kidney, I think I still had hope for the healthcare system. So what happened to the artificial kidney? Is it still being developed? Did the dialysis industry steal all the project files? And most importantly, where is the head of the artificial kidney project? Has he vanished? Did he escape to a secret lab in the Himalayas to finish his masterpiece? Did Elon Musk hire him to build a tweeting kidney? Let's be serious for a moment because I've talked a lot about the artificial kidney, and I'm a big fan of Dr. Joshua Roy and his team's work. Back in 2022, I really believed we were on the verge of something amazing, something that could change the lives of chronic kidney disease patients forever. No more dialysis, no more transplant lists. However, over the past two or three years, News about the development of the artificial kidney has become scarce, and we haven't heard much about it anymore. What happened? Now, for those who don't know about the artificial kidney, it's a true technological marvel. It's about the size of a natural kidney and can be implanted inside the body. It wouldn't require any external power source and wouldn't need any immunosuppressive drugs. It would do the work of a real kidney. We still don't know when human trials will begin. We still don't know whether the artificial kidney will actually be ready by the end of the decade as promised. And why is that? Maybe because they still don't have enough funding to complete development. So to answer the question, yes, the artificial kidney is real, but we don't know when human testing will begin. And by the way, Dr. Shuroi hasn't actually gone missing, what's missing is the money he needs to continue developing the artificial kidney. Here's the question, can you talk about whether wheat and grains prevent your body from absorbing certain vitamins and nutrients, like B12, etc.? Anyway, do eating wheat and grains cause major vitamin deficiencies? That's not how the human body works. No one has ever sat in a doctor's office and heard, Ma'am, you're low on B12, we found excessive quinoa levels in your system. That's not how it works. Actually, there is a little bit of truth buried in all the misinformation about whole grains. People with celiac disease might have slightly reduced ability to absorb B12 if they eat certain grains. But if you have celiac disease and you're still eating gluten, Poor B12 absorption should be the least of your worries, seriously. And for everyone else? Grains won't stop your body from absorbing B vitamins. Grains aren't out to get you, they're not nutritional vampires. And guys, is this like those carnivore diet influencers? They keep your body from absorbing nutrients. Because maybe in the mind of a keto deeter, grains can do that. But in the real world? So unless you have celiac disease or you're trying to make a living selling carnivore cookbooks, I really don't think you need to worry about wheat and grains causing any nutrient deficiencies at all. This is the comment, I see many people doing the carnivore diet and getting great results, but I'm really hesitant to try it. Has anyone done it and gotten good results? The carnivore diet. The diet that includes everything your kidneys hate most, protein, phosphorus, not to mention the lack of fiber and essential vitamins and minerals. But at least those pesky grains aren't stealing your vitamins anymore. They can't steal your vitamins if you're not getting any in the first place, right? That's why I don't like carnivore diet influencers. They don't care if you have kidney disease. They don't care that you'll suffer. They only care about selling cookbooks. And I'm not saying this based on just a feeling. Real patients have tried the carnivore diet, and the result? 
Let me tell you, their GFR dropped fast. Most of them lost some kidney function. In a few cases, the GFR dropped by more than 30 points, and one person in particular had to go on dialysis. Yes, just from following the carnivore diet. Please don't end up on dialysis because of a fad diet. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Leave a comment below. Goodbye.